G'day guys, welcome back to the Devon Tuga Investing Channel. In this video today, we're going to be looking at Micron's Q1 2023 earnings and we're just going to provide a general update on Micron as a business. So guys, before we get into it, make sure you like and subscribe. So Micron came in with revenue within the guidance that management gave in the previous quarter. They came in with revenue of $4.1 billion dollars. This is significantly down year over year as well as down quarter over quarter. They came in with gross margins of 22.9% which is also significantly down year over year and quarter over quarter. They came in with a loss. So they came in with a negative diluted EPS of four, negative 4 cents. And why, why, why have, why have um, the results here for Micron deteriorated? Well... There's two main reasons. The first main reason is there's far too much memory supply in the market. Therefore, Micron are being forced to cut back on production to bring the supply and demand back into balance. And secondly, the demand has fallen off for memory products at the moment. This is mainly due to macro concerns, high inflation, high interest rates, companies cutting back on capex and that sort of thing but the biggest issue is definitely supply the market is way oversupplied in fact in the conference call the management said this is the most uh, supply oversupplied the market has been in 13 years so if we look here we can see that three cash flow was negative 1.5 billion for the quarter the company did say that for the rest of 2023, profitability is going to be a challenge as at the moment, obviously gross margins drop when you uh, reduce supply, revenue drops if you're reducing supply and it's going to take time for the supply and demand balance to get back to a healthy place and Profitability, particularly in terms of free cash flow, is going to be challenged. You can see that they have reduced their capex guidance to seven billion to seven point five billion. They spent two point five billion dollars in capex in the first quarter of twenty twenty three. So capex is going to be coming down. The company did buy back shares in the first quarter of twenty twenty three. However, they have suspended their share buyback program for now. They will continue to keep paying a dividend moving forward, albeit a very small dividend. So if we now talk about the end markets, in particular data center, PC and graphics and mobile and intelligence edge, well, what I've done is I've highlighted, you know, the the good in uh, in green, the bad in red, and just the neutral in yellow. Data center. Look, they've reduced their expectations for growth moving forward when it comes to cloud demand and the amount of demand for DRAM and NAND products within data centers. This is not really much of a surprise. It is bad because they've had to reduce their long-term guidance. They, they are now guiding long-term uh, lower growth due to data center demand and Look, it's not it's not a surprise. You see a lot of big tech cutting back on their capex spend for data centers. You see AWS, Amazon, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud. You know a lot of these, uh, you know those three companies cutting back quite significantly on their capex spend. In terms of PC and graphics, well, for PC, no surprise here. Weak economy. Um, we're tailing and like competing against years of you know strong work from home pc demand so that's going to be hard to compete against we are looking at a uh, low to mid single digit decline in pc unit volume in terms of graphics this is actually good it's expected to outpace the broader market in calendar year 23 and this is driven by micron having the world's best technology when it comes to GDDR. They got their GDDR6X technology. Um, in terms of mobiles, look, it's expected to decline. Uh, 
in for calendar year 2022 by 10% year over year. However, in in 2023, it's forecasted to be flattish to slightly up. Uh, no real surprise here. Weak economy, not much room for growth. However, over the long term, we do have the movement from 4G to 5G, which should supply or should contribute growth here. And then in terms of auto demand, uh, demand is really strong here. Revenue grew 30% year over year. Really robust growth and pretty stable margins as well. I know it doesn't talk about the margins here, but the auto memory business does have pretty stable margins. And then in terms of industrial, that segment will show weakness in the first half of the year. However, the company are expecting this to improve as inventory levels improve within the memory industry. If we look at the industry outlook here, full calendar year 2022, we're expecting bit demand growth in the low to mid single digit percentage for DRAM and NAND. And then for 2023, growth improving or well, demand growth improving to 10% in DRAM and 20% in NAND, which is you know below their long-term estimates, which their long-term estimate has been revised to mid single, uh, single teens growth. Sorry, mid-teens growth in uh, DRAM and low to mid-twenties uh, growth in NAND. And what's going to drive improved demand trends over the next few months? Well, we've got obviously demand levels improving each quarter and also new CPU platforms being launched as well as China hopefully opening up their economy. Why was the long-term DRAM and NAND CAGA uh, revised? Well, lower growth in the PC and smartphone markets is expected and also moderation in the uh, cloud market. In terms of supply, in calendar year 2022, the supply growth is well, outpa well outpacing the demand growth, hence... There's a lot of inventory at the moment, but to try to rebalance this, Micron's doing a good thing. They're cutting back on supply growth in 2023 to try to bring healthier or more healthy supply demand balance, you know, in the coming year. And because of this, we've already mentioned this, due to the supply demand mismatch, profitability is expected to remain challenged in 2023. So what actions are Micron taking to address this? Well, first of all, they're reducing CapEx. We already spoke about that. They're reducing CapEx outside of construction costs for new fabs, down by 50% year over year. They're doing a sharp reduction in wafer starts. This should help reduce supply into the market. And they're slowing the progress on their, on their techno transitions Instead of tra doing the transition in 2024, they're looking to uh, introduce the one gamma node in 2025. And then they're in just in general reducing costs. They're actively lowering discretionary spend. I remember reading somewhere that they're reducing executive compensation and just reducing costs of goods sold in general. In terms of guidance, guidance is going to be weak for the second quarter of 2023. Revenue is decreasing. It's going to decrease quarter over quarter, obviously decrease a lot year over year. Gross margin is going to continue to deteriorate. The losses, losses in terms of EPS are going to widen. And it is expected that Q2 of 2023 is going to be the worst quarter for Micron and they should improve going out after the second quarter of 2023 if management are correct in their judgment. So hopefully that is the case. Um, the recovery will depend heavily on how the other memory players respond. So obviously there are three memory players. I've spoke about this in my previous videos. as Micron and then there's two Korean competitors, one being Samsung, one being SK. 
SK have already announced that they're reducing supply, just like Micron is reducing supply. However, Samsung so far have not said that they're reducing supply, and if Micron don't reduce supply along with um, Micron and SK, obviously it's going to take longer for the supply-demand balance to equalize. As a result, profitability will remain challenged if Samsung does not reduce supply as well, which obviously is going to hurt Micron's free cash flow moving forward, and it's going to take longer for the supply-demand balance to normalize, which obviously, you know, it, it hurts, but we've got to see what happens there. Um, long term, I still see Micron performing well. There's a lot of tailwinds in terms of demand for memory products, including DRAM and NAND. However, yeah, we'll see what happens with supply over the next sort of 12 to 24 months. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. hope you enjoyed the update. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.